In fact, Nirvana means not produced and not destroyed. It is the eternal, still bright, pure land. It is neither produced nor destroyed, neither increasing nor decreasing, neither unified nor pure. It is a place where all Buddhas dwell. The world we now live in is called the land where common people and sages dwell together, because in this world there are common people, sages, Buddha and Bodhisattvas. South heroes and those enlightened to conditions are all living together. The place where those of the two vehicles dwell is called the expedient land for those with more to learn. Why is it called expedient? Because although that place is nice to live in, it is still not ultimate nirvana. It is partial and incomplete. What is that must dwell in? the land adorned with real rewards. Bodhisattvas play about with spiritual penetrations, purify their Buddha lands, and teach and transform living beings in lands adorned with real rewards. The place where Buddha dwell is called the eternal, still bright, pure land. If you study the Buddha Dharma, you should now know what these four lands are. For example, a certain person said that he had already become a Buddha. So then I asked him, In what land do you live? He could not answer. He basically did not have any place. So what kind of Buddha had he become? He became a Buddha that does not even know where he dwells. He goes around saying everyone is a Buddha. But if you ask him what land he lives in, he cannot open his mouth. He does not have anything to say. Who gave you your prediction? What is your Buddha name? He cannot answer these questions either. This proves that he is phony, falsely representing himself as a Buddha. For example, to say that a ghost is a Buddha is false and a misrepresentation to sell people the highest grade of eating apples when they are really just common cooking apples is also called false representation or mislabeling. When you become a Buddha, you should know your land and your name. Shariputra had studied with Shakyamuni Buddha for over 40 years. Then the Buddha gave him a prediction of Buddhahood, saying that he would be called a flower light Buddha. If you say you are a Buddha, then what is your Buddha name? If you do not know, then you are not a Buddha. You are just falsely representing yourself as a Buddha. There are all kinds of phonies in this world, even phony Buddhas. When all Buddhas have taken across the living beings, which they should take across when they have touched and transformed for measureless numbers of compass, transforming those with whom they have affinities, then they wish to enter Nirvana. But if the Buddhas enter Nirvana, they will go to the eternal, still light, bright, pure land. So Universal Worthy Bodhisattva says, if there are Buddhas wishing for Nirvana, I request that they not enter Nirvana, but take more living beings across and dwell in the world for as many compass as there are dust most in Shetras. I request that they dwell in the world for compass numerous as dust most in Buddha lands to bring benefit and bliss to every being. I worship those with blessings, praise them, and make offerings. This line refers to the vows of to worship and respect all Buddhas and to praise the thus come ones. It speaks of worship and praise. It also refers to the vow to vastly cultivate making offerings. Blessings refers to making offerings to those with blessings. Some texts read, to make offerings to Buddhas, but the meaning is the same. Making offerings to Buddha is the same as giving offerings to those with blessings. Because the Buddhas have perfected blessings and wisdom, they are the double, doubly perfect ones. 
perfect in blessings and wisdom. I request that the Buddhas remain in the world and turn the Dharma wheel with a sincere mind, relying on the vow power of universal worthy Bodhisattvas and great kings of vows. I request that the Buddhas remain long in the world and constantly turn the wondrous Dharma wheel. The gurus gained from following and rejoicing in merit and virtue, and from repentance and reform are transferred to living beings and the Buddha way. Merit and virtue come forth from following and rejoicing, and from repenting and reforming. Because you repent and reform, your offense karma is lessened, and as a result, your gurus increase. But as the text says, I will not hold my gurus for myself, but dedicate them to all living beings of the Dharma realm. All my merit and virtue belong to living beings of the Dharma realm, and I will stand in for living beings of the Dharma realm and take on the burden of their offenses. This is called undergoing suffering on behalf of living beings. Therefore, the text says that I dedicate all my merit and virtue to bring to living beings and the Buddha way, so that living beings might soon reach Buddhahood. I study with the Buddhas and practice the perfect conduct of universal worthy. I wish always to study with the Buddhas to eternally study the Buddha way with all Buddhas, and I will cultivate and study the Buddha way with all Buddhas, and I will cultivate and study universal worthy Bodhisattvas, fully perfected powers and practices. I make offerings to all the first commons of the past. I make offerings to all Buddhas, all the Buddhas of the past, to all present Buddhas throughout the ten directions. All future teachers of gods and men, the future teachers of gods and men are the Buddhas whose aspirations to joy have been completed, that is to have fully perfected their wishes and hopes. I follow in study throughout the three periods of time. I wish to study the Buddha Dharma with all Buddhas and quickly attain great Bodhi. That way, I swiftly attain the way of great enlightenment. Sutra in all lands of the ten directions, vast, great, pure, and wonderfully adorned, all Satagatas sit beneath royal Bodhi trees, while assemblies circumambulate them. I vow that every living being in all directions will be peaceful, happy, and without worry. May they obtain the proper Dharma's profound aid, and may all their afflictions be wiped away without exception. Commentary In all lands of the ten directions, all enclose the ten directions of the Dharma realm, north, south, east, and west, northeast, Southeast, northwest, southwest, above and below, and all the lands and countries, and all the Buddha countries there, which are vast, great, pure, and wonderfully adorned, because the entire great expanse of the ten directions of the Dharma realm is meant. The line of the text says, "Vast, great, and pure." Pure means without the slightest bit of defilement. Wonderfully adorned means that the ten directions of the Dharma realm are adorned by subtle, inconceivable adornments. All Sadakatas sit beneath royal Bodhi trees in every one of the lands of the ten directions. Each Buddha accomplishes the way beneath the king of trees, the Bodhi tree, while assemblies that can manipulate them. All the assemblies throughout the Dharma realm will see like assemblies of Bodhisattvas. The see like assemblies of sound hearers. The see like assemblies of those enlightened to conditions. The see like assemblies of bhikshus, bhikshunis, upasakas, and upasikas. The see like assemblies of gods, dragons, and the rest of the eightfold division. Circumambulate all the Buddhas as they sit beneath the Bodhi trees throughout all worlds. I vow that. Every being in all directions will be peaceful, happy, and without worry. I will dedicate myself 
to others and vow that all living beings in the world throughout the ten directions will never be worried, grieved, or disturbed. May they instead obtain the proper Dhamma's profound aid and be happy. I vow that they will all obtain the extremely profound wondrous Dharma of Prana and its benefit so that all their afflictions will be wiped away without exception, so that not the slightest bit remains. To destroy all afflictions without exception means that not even a hand's breadth of afflictions remains. Speaking about wiping away all afflictions is very easy, but doing it is very difficult. You might say that you have rid yourself of afflictions, but still your afflictions return. You might wish to cut off your afflictions, but still you cannot. Who knows for how many great ends you have had intimate connections with your afflictions. Therefore, although you may want to leave them, you cannot. Why not? Because you have no wisdom. Because you have stupidity. When people with wisdom can destroy all their afflictions without exception. Listening to the sutras and hearing the drama, we study our original existent wisdom. Although we call it studying our originally existent wisdom, we still do not acquire this wisdom by hearing the drama. This wisdom is something we already have, but because we have not used it for a long time, we have forgotten it. Now, by hearing the sutras and listening to the drama, our extremely profound, originally existent prana, prana wisdom is uncovered, and when our wisdom arises, afflictions and stupidity disappear. If you do not go along with stupidity and afflictions, they will not have any place to dwell. Where do afflictions and ignorance dwell? They only dwell in darkness. If you have light, they cannot remain, and if they and they will run off and disappear. What is light? Light is wisdom. What is darkness? Darkness is ignorance. If you have no ignorance, you will have no afflictions, and you will give rise to the light of real wisdom. Why do people become afflicted? Because they do not understand. If they understood, they would not have any afflictions. Sutra, when I cultivate towards the body, I will gain the knowledge of past lives in all destinies. I will always live the whole life and cultivate pure precepts without outflows, never broken and without stain. Commentary When I cultivate towards body, if you want wisdom, you must cultivate. If you do not cultivate, you will not have wisdom. People who are intelligent have cultivated the way. Perhaps in past lives they read many sutras, or perhaps they cultivated ascetic practices for a long time. Because causes like these, they are intelligent in the present life. The ascetic practices spoken of are not the ascetic practices of sleeping, eating, and being lazy. Take someone who is lazy. It certainly involves a lot of suffering, and it is not an easy life. You must have some samadhi to be able to do nothing. If you do not have any samadhi and you still want to be lazy, you will not feel comfortable when you are sitting still, and you will not feel free and at ease when you are standing. There are many ways to cultivate body. Some practice short meditation. Some cultivate the practice of giving. Some cultivate the precepts, some cultivate patience, some cultivate vigor, and some cultivate prana wisdom. All these practices are different, but they all lead to samadhi and wisdom. Explaining this brings to mind a matter of public record that I will tell you about. These circumstances arose over 10,000 years ago and involved an old cultivator. Can we know what took place over 10,000 years ago? Of course, we can. Archaeologists know that what happened tens of thousands of years ago. And furthermore, 
They are Buddhists with five eyes and six spiritual penetrations, who know what took place million years, millions of years ago. The old cultivator, who is the subject of this public record, cultivated the way by practicing meditation. When he first began meditating, his legs hurt quite a lot. When his legs hurt so much that he could not take the pain, he fought with it. You don't like to hurt. Well, I like to hurt. He battled with the pain in his legs. When his legs screamed, "I can't take it," he replied, "You can't take it. That's your problem. I'm not paying attention to you." And he continued to meditate. In the very beginning, he withstood with the pain for half an hour. Before he moved his legs and rested, then he began sitting for an hour, then an hour and a half, and then two hours, always increasing the length of his meditation periods. Finally, he could sit for days, months, and even a few years, and in the end, he finally defeated the pain in his legs. After his victory, he never wanted to get up, and so he sat for a few decades before. He stuck out his legs. After he had rested a bit, he decided to meditate until Shakyamuni Buddha came into the world, and to help him spread the Buddha Dharma. Having made this decision, he pulled up his legs and entered meditative samadhi again to wait. When Shakyamuni Buddha came into the world, he saw that this old cultivator liked to meditate. And never get up, and so he did not disturb him. It was just as if the old cultivator were in a long sleep that had lasted several millennia. He slept until his clothes were in rags and his body was covered with inches of dust. Many generations of birds built nests in his hair. Although he was a person, he was more like a mud statue. It is not known exactly how many years he sat. In the Tang Dynasty, the Dharma Master Xuan Chuang made a pilgrimage to India to find sutras. The Chinese have a saying: Xuan Chuang of the Tang Dynasty went to west to get the sutras. During his travels, he happened upon this old cultivator, whose clothes were in tatters and who was covered with inches of dust. His head, face, and body. Were under an incredible amount of dirt. Jama Master Xuan Chuang took out a small hand bell and rang it in front of his face. Ding! The old cultivator said, "Hmm," and woke up from his sleep. "What are you doing?" he said. Jama Master Xuan Chuang retorted, "What are you doing?" The old cultivator said, "I'm waiting for Shakyamuni Buddha." To come into the world to spread the Buddha Dharma, I will help him. Dharma Master Xuan Chuang said, "You've slept too long. You've slept for several thousand years. In fact, more than a thousand years have passed since Shakyamuni Buddha entered Nirvana. It's been a long time, and you're still sitting there, not knowing what has happened. You didn't even know that Shakyamuni Buddha entered the world." The old cultivator said, "No problem. I just meditate until the white young Buddha appears in the world. I'll wait for Maitreya Bodhisattva to come, and then I will help him teach and transform living beings." Having said as much, he prepared to sink into samadhi again. He had already begun his contemplation and was about to enter samadhi when Master Xuan Chuang called to him, "Oh!" Elder fellow meditator, sometimes in China, people who have left the home life will address one another in a familiar way by referring to one another as elder fellow meditator. Don't enter samadhi again. Also, Shakyamuni Buddha has entered Nirvana. His dharma still exists in the world. You can help me spread the Buddha dharma. The old cultivator said. Helped you spread the Dharma. Who are you anyway? Dharma Master Xuan Chuang said, "I'm from the land of Tang, and my name is Xuan Chuang. I'm on my way to India. 
to collect the Buddha's Dharma jewels, and when I return to China, I will need someone to help me translate and spread the Dharma. You've been meditating for so many years and doing nothing. It's too pitiful. Why don't you help me spread the Buddha Dharma? The old cultivator said, "I can help you." Dharma Master Xuan Chuang said, "Yes, but now you have to change. You can't use the body you are in now. I don't think it could even stand up. You've been sitting for so long that your legs have probably fused together and don't want to separate. So you'll have to change your house, move to a new house." The cultivator said, "Where should I go?" Dharma Master Xuan Chuang replied, "Move to Chang'an, the capital of China, and go to the palace with the yellow tile roof. When I come back from India, I will come and get you." The cultivator said, "Okay, I guess I can do that. I believe what you say, and I'll help you spread the Dharma." Then he went off to Chang'an to be reborn. Although Dharma Master Xuan Chuang had told him to be reborn in the house with a yellow tile roof, the old cultivator forgot and got lost, and ended up at the house with a green tile roof, the home of the Minister of War, and became the son, the son of the Minister of, of War's elder brother. When Dharma Master Xuan Chuang left Chang'an, the Emperor Tai Tsu had asked him. When will you return? Write me a letter when you are about to return, and I will read you. Dharma Master Xuan Chuang replied, "The branches of this pine tree are now pointing west. When they point east, I will return." Indicating a large pine tree beside the imperial palace door. During the next fourteen years, Emperor Tai Tsu often looked at the pine. To see if the branches had turned to face east, one day it happened. Is it not strange that a tree could do this? Emperor Tai Tsu said, "Dharma Master Xuan Chuang is coming back today. Let's quickly go outside the city to welcome him." When he left, he said that the branches on this pine would point to the east when he was about to return, and today they are pointing to the east. So everyone went to the outskirts of the city to welcome Dharma Master Xuan Chuang and escort him home. When Dharma Master Xuan Chuang saw the emperor, he was extremely happy and said, "I congratulate the emperor." The emperor retorted, "Why are you congratulating me? Nothing special has happened." The year I left, I, you should have had a prince born into your family. No, no prince has been born. You've been gone a long time, but I still haven't had a son. When Dharma Master Xuan Chuang heard this, he thought, "Strange! I told the old cultivator to be born as a prince. How is it that he never came? So now I will look into this and see what happened to him." Emperor Tai Tsu did not know what he was talking about. Dharma Master Xuan Chuang had spoken words that were incomprehensible to the emperor, so he did not pay much attention. That night, Dharma Master Xuan Chuang meditated and contemplated the causes and conditions surrounding the old cultivator's rebirth. As soon as he began his investigation, he saw that the old cultivator had run off. To the household of the war minister Yu Qingkong, and that he was now a young boy of fourteen. He had grown very big and never behaved properly. Previously, the old cultivator had always strictly adhered to the principles of wholesome conduct. But after he was born into the household of Yu Qingkong, he became very unruly. He ate meat. Drank liquor and played around with women. He could and would do anything because Yu Chi Kung's house had power, money, servants, and status. So no matter what he did, no one dared remind him. The next day, Dharma Master Xuan Chuang told Emperor Tai Tsu, "Yesterday I congratulated you for the birth of a new prince. When in fact the old cultivator who was supposed..." 
to be reborn as your son went astray. Also, I told him to be born as your son. He went to the household of Yu Chi Kung. To correct his mistake, you should issue an edict commanding him to leave the home life. This is important because previously he made an agreement with me to come here and help me spread the Buddha drama. The emperor agreed and issued an imperial edict requiring Yu Chi Kung's nephew to leave the home life. When Yu Chi Kung received this order, he said to his nephew, "The emperor wants you to leave the home life." Thus saying this, the boy replied, "How can the emperor tell me to leave the home life? I haven't finished playing. How can I leave the home life?" Yu Chi Kung said, "It is not right to refuse. If you don't leave the home, when the emperor tells you to do so, you will lose your head." You must obey the emperor's orders. Well, if that's the case, I'll go see the emperor myself and reason with him," replied the nephew. Drama master Xuan Chuang knew in advance that the boy would not want to leave the home life, and he had already told the emperor. Tomorrow, when Yu Chi Kong's nephew comes, he will try to reason with you, and when that fails. He will give you his conditions for leaving home. Whatever his conditions are, agree to them. Whatever he wants is okay. The emperor replied, "All right, I will take care of this tomorrow." The next day, Yu Chi Kong went to see the emperor and said, "My nephew, whom you have ordered to leave the home life, would like to have an audience to discuss this." The emperor consented, and so the war minister brought his nephew to see the emperor. The emperor said, "I believe in the Buddha Dharma, and I feel that living the home life is the best thing one can do. Therefore, I wish you to live the home life and spread the Buddha Dharma." As much discussion, the boy said, "There are three things that I cannot do without. If you can agree to the to three conditions." I will leave the home life, but if you can't agree with me, then even if you kill me, I won't leave home. Now look at this. He was not even concerned about his life and death. Emperor Tai Tsung said, "What are your conditions?" He replied, "What I like most is drinking wine. Those who leave the home life take a precept against it." But since I am being forced, I must have this condition fulfilled. I want to be able to drink after I leave home. No matter where I go, I must be followed by a cart full of wine. The emperor said, "I permit your first condition. What is the second? My second condition concerns meat, which I like to eat very much. Those who live the whole life are vegetarians." But I cannot be a vegetarian. I must eat meat. I can't do without it even for a day. So I must be followed by a cart of meat wherever I go. The emperor said, "This is also permissible. It's but a small matter and creates no problems." Do you have any more conditions? Yes, I still have one condition. What is it? Asked the emperor. Although monks don't have wives and stay far away from the opposite sex, a cart full of women is nevertheless one of my conditions also, because I still cannot do without them. Wherever I go, a cart full of beautiful women must follow me. I absolutely must have these three cards in my retinue: a cart of wine, a cart of meat, and a cart full of beautiful women. If you agree to my three conditions, then I will obey you your order to live the whole life. But if you don't agree to even one of these conditions, then I won't leave home. The emperor thought this over. He's really depraved. But Drama Master Xuan Chuang told me to agree to any of his conditions. Then he said, "Agreed. You may have your cut forms of beautiful women, if that is what." You want. If this is the way you wish to live the home life, so be it. Now that I've agreed to your conditions, will you leave home? 
The new field of Yu Chi Kung thought, "I'm getting everything I want, so why not?" So he said, "Okay, I lead the whole life now."